What's going on guys, Arrow here, and guys, if you have a Nintendo Switch, then I'm sure that one game that a lot of you guys love to play is Splatoon 2. So Splatoon 2 came out earlier this summer, and this is definitely one of my favorite games that's on the Nintendo Switch so far. Whenever I've got some free time, I always get my Nintendo Switch and just start playing some Splatoon 2. And so today, I thought it would be a cool idea to make a video on 51 things that don't make sense in Splatoon. Now to make this video even more fun, I hid three Super C snails inside of this video, and so if you're able to find all three of them, definitely be sure to comment down below and let me know. But yeah, without further ado, let's super jump right into it. So as soon as you start out Splatoon, you will be greeted by the Squid Sisters, and you're gonna have to listen to them as they give you guys information about the stages, new weapons, updates, and all of that. The only thing is, you're gonna have to listen to that every single time, and you're not gonna be able to skip it. The good thing is, I'm sure if there's a sequel to Splatoon or something like that, if it comes out in the future, they'll probably have like a skip button or you won't have to listen through all of that. Never mind, we've got Splatoon 2 right here, and inside here we have Pearl and Marina, and every time you start out Splatoon 2, you're gonna have to listen to Pearl and Marina, give you guys information on all of the stages and stuff like that, and there's no way you're gonna be able to skip that. So playing ranked modes inside of Splatoon is a lot of fun, and I love playing all of them, but there's definitely certain ranked modes that I like better than others, and there's no way for me to choose which ranked modes I want to play, and I just have to play the ones that they give me when they're assigned to that certain time frame. Hopefully inside of Splatoon 2 though, this will probably be resolved. Just kidding, Splatoon 2 is just like Splatoon 1, as you're gonna have to play through whatever ranked modes are available during that time, and there's no way for you to choose what type of ranked modes you want to play online. The fact that you're not able to choose what stage you want to play on inside of Splatoon, and all of the stages in that game will rotate every 4 hours, so you just have to hope that you're probably going to get a stage you like when you're about to play the game. But I can understand why they did this, Splatoon didn't launch with that many stages, so they're probably just going to do that so that they have some type of rotation. I'm sure they'll fix this in a sequel. Nope, Splatoon 2 will reduce the time every single stage will rotate to only 2 hours, but you're still stuck on whatever stages the game gives you. So in Splatoon, out of the maps that are currently available, there's no way for you to be able to vote on which map you want in your next match. I'm sure Splatoon 2 or whatever the sequel is will probably have much more maps than the original Splatoon, and so they'll probably have a voting feature enabled in that game for sure. Nope, even in Splatoon 2, out of whatever maps are available for you to play on, there's no way for you to vote on which map you want in your next match, and so that way you're still stuck on whatever map the game gives you, and I couldn't tell you how many times I've played for 20 minutes on the same map. The fact that the split screen multiplayer inside of Splatoon is just a simple balloon popping game. Like why couldn't they have just put like a split screen multiplayer online where you and a friend could both be playing turf or something like that. I'm sure they're gonna fix this in the sequel, they'll probably have much more power and stuff on a new system, so I'm sure the split screen multiplayer mode will be much more interesting on that one. Oh wait, Splatoon 2 doesn't have a split screen multiplayer. The fact that there's no way for you to be able to switch what weapons and gear you have equipped when you're playing online inside a Splatoon. It's all good though, this was a problem in Mario Kart on the Wii U as well, but when Mario Kart 8 Deluxe came out on the Switch, they decided to finally add a mode for you to be able to switch your characters and cards inside of the lobby, and so I'm sure Splatoon 2 or whatever the sequel is on the Switch will make sure that this problem is also resolved. Well, I can't say I didn't see that coming. Even inside of Splatoon 2, there is no way for you to be able to switch what weapons and gear you have equipped unless you leave the entire lobby. The single player campaign inside of Splatoon only has a few hours of gameplay. There's no option to play with computer players or bots inside of Splatoon 2. This is definitely a bummer because if you take your Nintendo Switch with you in a car or a plane or something, and if you've already beaten the campaign inside of Splatoon 2, there's not really much else you can do, and it would have been awesome to have a mode like this where you could practice against other modes and stuff by playing with computer players. So if you're playing online and one of your teammates gets disconnected, too bad for you as you're going to be having a 3 against 4 game as there's no computer player or anything else that replaces your disconnected person and you're just going to be at a disadvantage for the rest of the game. The fact that because of someone else's bad internet, if everyone else gets kicked out of the lobby, you could get banned from playing online inside of Splatoon 2. So Splatoon finally decides to add voice chat inside of Splatoon 2, which is awesome, as Splatoon 2 is definitely a competitive game that requires you to have voice chat and team communication, but you're gonna have to make sure you have a phone connected to you at all times. So we all know that squids are sea creatures, however inside of Splatoon, falling into the water will kill you. The fact that the developers decided to change the jump button in Splatoon 2 from X to B. I couldn't tell you how many times I opened up the map instead of jumping when I first played Splatoon 2. 
The fact that the single player mode inside of Splatoon 2 is 90% similar to the single player mode in Splatoon 1. Now I know they added some cool stuff in Splatoon 2 like the grind rails and other new things, but overall the Splatoon 2 single player is still pretty much similar to the other one. You've got the same number of levels pretty much, and you've also got the same way to unlock them by shooting those kettles. Either way though, the single player mode is still a lot of fun. The fact that if you want to unlock all of the gear that's inside a Splatoon, you're gonna have to buy the Splatoon Amiibos which is basically like physical DLC. The fact that if you want to be able to save your gear loadouts for certain weapons inside a Splatoon 2, you're gonna have to buy an Amiibo as that's the only way to do that. So Splatoon 2's got a brand new mode called Salmon Run, and this is a really fun mode to play as it's like a survival mode where you have to survive against a horde of enemies, but the only thing that makes no sense is why you're only able to play Salmon Run at certain times. The fact that when people shoot at you while you're in the baller, it's actually going to be able to stop your baller from moving. Like you would think if you're in an invincible hamster ball, you should be able to just run through and bulldoze any ink shots that are coming towards you, but that's just not the case with Splatoon 2. How on earth are people able to draw this ridiculously well in Splatoon 2? The fly fish in Salmon Run. This thing is so annoying that it's probably taken me out the most times when I'm playing Salmon Run than all of the other enemies in Salmon Run combined. The fact that there's no form of communication from the two open buttons on the d-pad in Splatoon 2. Like we already have Booyah and This Way on the d-pad, but it would be really cool if they had two more options on the other two sides of the d-pad, like having one saying I've got this, or the other one saying help so that you can have other forms of communication. The fact that if you want to play ranked modes online with your friends in Splatoon 2, you're gonna have to make sure that all of your friends reach a high rank in normal ranked modes before you're able to unlock the league battles. The fact that there are no new ranked modes in Splatoon 2. Why are Marina and Pearl zippers so big? How if you use a ticket in Splatoon 2 and play an online match, and if in the middle of that match you get disconnected, you're still gonna lose your ticket. The fact that it's possible for you to super jump into the water to your death. The fact that you can't play Splatoon on the Wii U with the Wii U Pro Controller. Like I understand you needed the gamepad in certain situations because you would use the gamepad to launch like an ink strike by tapping on the gamepad where you want to launch it, but they could have easily figured a way around that if you're using the Pro Controller as well. Like they could have just done what's already in Splatoon 2 by having the map appear on the screen and then just moving your Pro Controller with like a cursor to indicate where you want to launch the ink strike. So after Inklings are done playing Turf War or Ranked modes, who cleans up after all of the ink that's left on all of the stages? The fact that the Splatoon 2 developers deny if Marina is an Octoling or not. Hey, if she's got suction cups on top of her tentacles, she's an Octoling in my book. Where on earth do the themes come from for Splatfests? How is Spike or Merch able to find the exact gear that you ordered in exactly one day? The fact that the original Splatoon on the Wii U launched with only 5 maps. The fact that there's no option in Splatoon or Splatoon 2 to be able to view past matches or save replays. You guys wouldn't believe how many times I've played Splatoon games where I've had some amazing games where I've gotten so many snipes with a sniper or gotten some like amazing kills with a stingray and I just haven't been able to show them to you guys because my capture card wasn't with me. How come Krusty Sean decided to stop selling shoes and decide to start selling sandwiches instead? The fact that in Splatoon 2, you're pretty much able to fast travel to any location that you want, but if you want to go pick up your bonuses from playing Salmon Run, you're gonna have to walk all the way over there from the square. When you're playing Salmon Run in Splatoon 2, Mr. Grizz says he smells a whole bunch of salmonoids, but Mr. Grizz is a statue, so how is he able to smell them? Why does Krusty Sean only accept tickets as payment? Like I've got a whole bunch of money here from playing all of these matches online in Splatoon and he's only gonna accept tickets? Like doesn't he need money to survive as well? Like how is he gonna survive by just getting a whole bunch of tickets? So while you're playing through the campaign in Splatoon 2, there's actually one part in the campaign where you get a disruption in your form of communication. And here, Marie is able to ask the person who's disrupting the call on the other line if they're holding the phone upside down. But how would Marie even know if the phone is being held upside down because the sound would still come out the same way? Why are finding the levels in Cephalon HQ so hard? I'm not lying when I say it probably took me more time to find all of the levels in Cephalon HQ than playing through the entire single player campaign in Splatoon 2. The fact that Marina and Pearl will celebrate Callie's return, but not the great Zapfish's return to Inkopolis Square. 
how it takes a ridiculously long amount of time to be able to unlock all of the hero versions of the weapons in Splatoon 2. Like this is a really time consuming way because if you want to have all of the hero weapons in Splatoon 2, you're going to have to play through all of the levels that are in the single player campaign with every single weapon that you want the hero version of, and that's just going to take a really long time. How on earth do these glowing insects make salmonoids go insane? The fact that there's no way for you to skip the tutorial in Splatoon 2 even if you've already played through the global test fire or just know how to play Splatoon from on the Wii U. The fact that you're not able to view your deaths or how many times you got splatted in Splatoon 2. And finally, for number 51, Splatoon and Splatoon 2 have a whole bunch of gear that's available in the game, so how come it shows me in the shops which gear I already have? Like there's a whole bunch of gear that I haven't unlocked yet or I haven't gotten the chance to purchase, so how come it shows me all of this gear that I've already bought, but not the gear that I still need to buy? And so yeah, there you have it guys, those are 51 things that make no sense in Splatoon. Definitely be sure to hit that like button if you guys enjoyed this video, and also comment down below if you have any other things that don't make any sense in Splatoon or in Splatoon 2. I'm always curious to see what you guys have to say. Be sure to let me know if you were able to find the 3 hidden super sea snails that I put in this video. It would be really awesome if you were able to find all 3 of them. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I'm definitely going to have more Splatoon content in the future as well as other Nintendo content, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Go follow me on Twitter at @joarrow if you ever want to tweet me something or ask me something. I'm usually able to reply to everyone on Twitter, so definitely go and follow me there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching.